All right, big booming music. King Jingling's throne room. Must be a very important guy. Of course he's important. He sits on a chair. A blue one at that. Oh, what's up? That's right, he's a king, but he's still hip with all the kids. He's not into all that off-with-your-head nonsense. Oh, those cowardly Jinjos. Kickball. They're athletic Jinjos. Can't be all that athletic. They never did anything in the first game except stand around. Actually, no, they uh, really proved themselves at the end. What am I saying? I guess all that kickball training really built up to that. Oh, what's this? Aha! Now that looks familiar. Oh, but didn't we normally do a little dance when we got those? Jiggy Wiggy. With a silly name like that, he can't be that important. Oh, well, not so, not so much a secret now, man. Uh. Probably. It's a good storyteller. It's like the girl in a little princess. Just makes up random stories for fun. For imagination. Oh, yeah, I mean, wouldn't be a rare game without worlds and... Dingling, what? Okay, and he's going to telepathically show us something that we can somehow see for some reason. It's Bottle's house. Look at that. It's like a mini Bottle's. What is that? And we run the heck out of there. Yeah, does he have a queen? Is there a queen jingling? Or... I don't even know what her name would be. Jingle-less or something. <laughs> Alright, so... Looks like we got even more of an agenda. Yeah, that, that line right there is is basically Kazooie's character. Hey, look at that! <laughs> the bad guy appeared in the cut- or respawned in the cutscene. That was interesting. Meanwhile... Uh-oh, I see the drill's tracks. Have we finally made it to the end of their trail? That's right, it leads to... The Eye of Sauron! No, not quite. But it does lead to Mr. Freeze's ray gun and Batman and Robin. No, not quite. This must be where the witches are. To do voices or not do voices? Come on, sisters, time I lack. What's the plan to get my body back? Knowing the rhyming is, so stop it, we will not tell. How? If I must. Wait, what? You're not gonna rhyme? What? Yeah, your eyes don't deceive you. Grunty does no longer rhyme in this game. They got rid of that. Dirty big tank night foot is! Sour Grunty will take my tank foot! The new body you will have! An evil and heartless plan, I like it! How long will it take to suck up enough life force? Not slim you are, so pretty will be needed. So start blasting! Pink you must be! Tug you must be pink! Hmm. That cursed jingling has just given the furry full a jiggy. I reckon we should blast the Jinjo King. I'm not chugging that the blue be had, but we only have to press. That's right, suck! It would have got me obedient to begin the family Ah, that looks painful. So this machine sucks the life out of its targets. I can relate. After all, the life has now been sucked out of me after finding out Grunty no longer rhymes. All that rhyming. 
pure poetry. She gave rappers a run for their money. Even... Even poets like Walt Whitman couldn't compete with her. Now her sentences are just generic. They lack... Substance. And fun. Oh, he's a zombie. So, great, so this is where that stupid zombie trend started with games. Seriously, Red Dead Redemption on- <laughs> Right then, girls, let's blast the whole island. Get me to go, but be careful, be you, be me, me. It will take and revenge Bibble's heat! Ah, I wouldn't worry. Banjo's got no one to help him now that Mole and Jingling are gone. He'll never get to us in time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that wasn't fair. He hit me like right the dead second the cutscene stopped. Oh boy, look at that. All the life, all the joy, all the royalty sucked out of poor Bingo Blob's uh, house. Let's pay him a visit. Maybe we can bring him back to the light. Zombified throne room. No, it's all gray and... Dude, remember me! Banjo, your friend! Oh, no. What about his little pet? Oh, the poor thing. It's just ashes now. Dust to dust. It's still blinking, so... Now he's, he's really crazy. He's saying out random things that are, totally aren't clues for things that are gonna happen later. Anyway, let's get the heck out of here. There's even fire in here. Oh, wow. What are we going to do? Boy, today is just not my day, is it? <laughs> Might have you beat just a little bit, Conquer. Alright, let's continue onward. One thing that's really cool in this game, and a lot of Rare's games, is that the composer Grant Kirkhope is big on changing the music a little bit to fit the atmosphere of the particular area of the area. So if you notice, you're... Out here it's happy and peaceful, and then when you get to the d zombify area, the music changes just a little bit to fit that atmosphere. Although just a nitpick, I would have made it, maybe made it a little more creepy sounding. It, this music's kind of more derpy and fat guy-ish to me. But anyway, got a monster there and a couple more houses. And that area down there, we can't quite do anything there yet. But so I'll just make a little note of that. But that whole area is not really going to be very useful anyway. All right, Bottles House. What kind of family does he have? Does he have a family? Maybe he just lives with a bunch of frat buddies. Well, let's see if we can head through and get a little bit more information. Oh, hi there. Oh, big picture bottles. Are we gonna play a stupid puzzle game if we look at it? Doesn't appear so. Hi there. Uh, been better. <laughs> no complaints, though. Ah, so this must be Bottle's wife. It's interesting, she kind of looks... she looks pretty much just like him. <laughs> it's interesting, he fell in love with what's essentially like a twin sister, really. <laughs> yeah, that's slacker. Always coming home late. She has the typical where-you-been kind of outfit. The wives have to have the curls in the hair, or the... Is that a apron? Has she been cooking, possibly? Eh, what's that logo on the mug? Looks like it says BT or something, probably. Wow, self-aware. This game's known for that. Monster in the bedroom. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta spill the beans eventually. Well, he's at least a ghost. The news can't be that bad. Anyway, monster, you say? Well, that monster's no match for... Oh, it's just that? Come on, you could have taken care of that. Just midget shreks. Ah, nice little pad you two have. <laughs> What's interesting is this is, of course, 
Bottles and Mrs. Bottles' room. But if you look, what do they have in both Bottles and Mrs. Bottles' bedroom? Big picture of her. <laughs> That's interesting. So, honey, what what are we going to put in our room to represent our room? Big picture of me, honey. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll spill it. And then where's the picture of Bottles? Now we'll just stick it right there. Anyway, does he have a more more family? Oh, hello. Who's this guy? Hi there, midget bottles. Oh, goggles. Ah, how how fitting. They're all named after glass things. Oh, he must be like the intelligent one. Does he get that from his father? Mm. The Amazo Gaze Glasses. If you notice, he has a Donkey Kong plush. I would've liked that when I was a kid. Hardly ever got any real decent Nintendo merchandise when I was younger. Now it's like all over the place. I would've loved that stuff when I was a kid. Anyway, so he gives us a little upgrade for our vision. If we push the left and right C buttons. Can zoom in and out. Can't really demonstrate it too well in here, but it'll allow us to see things far away. So, if we take a gander at his wall, that is a poster of Jet Force Gemini, another classic from Rare. And not so much, kind of the forgotten middle child. Played that game here and there when I was a kid. I wasn't a huge fan of it, but I haven't played it in forever. Might be pretty decent. Might be worth checking out. Oh, hi there. He's got the ball cap on. Specky, huh? They're all named after glasses things. They probably have a grandfather named Bifogles and... A, um... Probably have an older cousin named Aviators. But they don't talk about him very much. He's kind of out there. Kickball tournament. Oh, yeah, that's right. The moles versus the... The Jinjos, but... The Jinjos are all gone. Yeah, I've got tunnel vision. Yeah, we already know that. Uh, what's his face told? Me? Yeah. That's what I love about Kazooie. She's just, she just speaks for the audience so much with her own little snarky things of her own. Yeah, that's all you got to say about that. So he doesn't really help us. He just plays with his stupid plane thing. Yeah, he looks like the more, like, athletic, fun of the two kids, and the other one's more like, yeah, leave me alone, I'm trying to read. And this is another Jet Force Gemini character. And... Well... <laughs> Have fun Google imaging that one, fellas. <laughs> Don't know the character's name, though, sorry. I'll look it up later. Alright, so we reached the next area of Iolo Hags, the Wooded Hollow, and we... Uh, I am Jiggy Wiggy, and this is my temple. If you want to see me, you'll need to get past my doorman first. Oh, great, the Bouncer. Gotta get past the Bouncer. Is my name on the list? How tough am I? Well, I've defeated, like, what, 12 of these Midget Shrek things, but that's not very good criteria. Alright, and that is another silo that we've activated. So now, we've activated a shortcut. So I'll show off how these work. Every time you go into these, you can access a different area of ILO Hags, and it allows you to access the areas much more conveniently. So, when you start the game up in your file, you'll be... You'll enter the beginning part here of Jinjo Village. And then you'll just jump into the silo and just go wherever you, you want to go. I've only activated one so far, but... Yeah, this, this will come into handy much later. It's just like the Dink Pots in Banjo-Kazooie. Alright, so we've got a couple of areas to visit before we really get the ball rolling. Thankfully, we're almost done with all the cutscene story kind of stuff. And right here... Ah, there's something familiar. Bird calling help. There we go, that is our first Jinjo of the game. Yep, off to... Okay, we get a cutscene. Don't worry, they don't do this like every time. This is just to show us that every time we get a Jinjo, they'll be slowly but surely filling the village back up and going back to their homes. In this case, we got a green one, and the greens have a total of five. 
And he, she's all thanks and stuff. Yeah, it's green like you. Just because you're the color green doesn't mean everything has to be green in your life, but... St. Patrick's Day is every day for you. Yeah, be sure to get this Jinjo. That, that can be a little overlooked. Yeah, and you'll notice that if you have the instinct to follow the tracks of the drill, it kind of leads to a dead end here, so... Looks like we're going to have to find some alternate routes. Oh, these guys, yeah. Bust them and you can get a little bit more health. They'll probably be always willing to sacrifice their health, won't they? Down here, um... Uh, yeah, I think this is just another route. I think this is back in, um... The Jinjo Village. Is it? Yeah, this is that area I showed earlier. That was kind of a dead end. Yeah, I don't really find myself using that little thing too much. Especially with the warp silos, so... Anyway, we got two or so more locations, and then we'll finally be able to start World 1. And we'll finally get all the cutscene dialogue nonsense out of the way. Anyway, let's head down here. Oh, we got a giant egg. A small hole. And some eggs decorated outside, so... Cutscene, yet another character. Heggy's Egg Shed. Hello, fatso. Eh, yeah, uh, this is Heggy. She's not really going to be much use to us right now. Actually, no use at all, so... Yeah, I just came here to introduce her character and remember her for later. Can't really do anything with her right now. Good lord. Well, who wants to invest in all the extra money that it would take to install a bathroom in this place anyway? Yeah. Looks like we got a mysterious egg here. Can't do anything with it. That's about it. You're useless. So. And really, she is kind of useless. You could probably just... I think at the top of my head, you can pretty much skip anything to do with her. And I don't think there's any consequence to it. I don't think there's anything mandatory with her, but... Just wanted to introduce her character and show her off. But yeah, blah, blah, let's get on to the real meat of this. This jiggy-wiggy guy. Alright, what are the credentials to get past you? You have a puzzle piece for a head. Curiosity gets the best of me. I am a little curious about this race of people. As well as their anatomy. I do wonder what the rest of their body is like. I won't lie. <laughs> How do they hold hands, connect to each other, etc.? Actually, I think he has regular hands. Oh, gee, yeah. Yeah, I might have heard of those. Okay, he's got regular... What is he, a person with a... Puzzle piece head? Interesting race of people. I think they ever, like, run into each other and get their heads, like, stuck together. Maybe that's how they find, like, compatibility with one another. You know, their heads get stuck and it's like, We fit together! Something. More of cutscenes of entering an area. So many important areas here. Greetings, O oh, Chosen One. You have entered the sacred temple of Jiggywiggy. Approach the golden monolith if you wish to prove yourself pretty. Uh oh. We're gonna enter some games. One man will live, one man will die. Okay, no. Not quite. Not that intense. Whoa, look at this. Some guy really took the time to buffer this place, didn't he? Guy probably comes in here with a Zamboni. Is that what it's called? Zamboni, Zamboni. It's a nice robe. I think he wears that thing all the time. He comes home from a hard day's work. I don't. Pretty sure he just kick. Probably just hangs around with a wife beater. He probably doesn't wear that thing all the time. All right, so we got a little bit of a challenge, if you want to call it that. Jiggy Wiggy's challenge one. And well, yeah, go ahead and talk over me and explain it. Yep, every time we open up a new world, we're gonna have to do one of these little puzzle challenges. Which is just like Bottle's little challenges that he had in back in Banjo-Kazooie. If you're a big fan of those, well... You're probably just getting all giddy in your seat, aren't you? Well, it's a little more fun. It, it adds a little bit 
extra something to opening up these worlds rather than just pressing the Z button, which is basically what you did in Banjo Kazooie. Clinker's Cavern and on. Alright, so all we gotta do is put the pieces in their proper uh, areas. And these first couple are, you know, there's almost nothing to these. In fact, two of these are like end pieces, so. Yeah. Um. I probably could just, like, off-screen these throughout the game, because there's no real reason to watch me do these every time, but they are considered- they are part of the game, and there is a sense of skill involved, so I don't really ever want to off-screen something that requires skill, at least at the top of my head. So he's going to wave his human arms, even though he's a puzzle piece dude. The giant crystal jigsaw piece of... Good thing I'm facing that challenge over there in the corner. That'd probably blind my eyeballs if I was looking at that. And the whole place blows up. No, not quite. Normally these are opening areas that are kind of far off, but this this one in particular is like right outside. See, it's like right next door, so... It's kind of funny how it's going through all that trouble just to open a little door next door. Well, geez, I mean, the beam was coming from the top of the uh, temple, right over there. What did it do? Like, curve around? Like, bend it or something. Alright, so he uses the power of beams to open up doors. Yeah, very, very powerful, dude. Probably just could have pushed the thing open. Well, you know what? I'm at... Oh, what? Oh, we can go through walls? What? What is this, Zelda? The Lens of Truth? Yeah, a little secret area back here. Um, a little concerned about showing these. I don't know how spoilery these will be. Yeah, actually, I didn't in the Let's Play. I probably should have. Yeah, there's a little something on that roof. Um, but we can't quite get it yet, so... Yeah, that one's kind of weird. Yeah, I think almost all these signs in the game offer some kind of hint of something. Sometimes they give a little information on what you're about to enter, but usually that's about it. I really want that robe you got, man. Not for sale. Alright, very well. Alright, so we can move on to World 1 now. As you can see, we need four jigsaw pieces to open World 2, so... Whenever you get four, you're welcome to... Come back and open the second world if you want. Oh, well, thanks. Just seal me out of there. Yeah, what if I want to drop by and have a little chit-chat every now and then? Get your thoughts on some of the political crises going on. Very well. Alright, here we are. World 1, my friends. And I'm going to start that in the next recording session. So, we'll finally get the ball rolling and really get to some actual gameplay, finally. Rather than all this story nonsense. Anyway... Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Guys and gals. Sorry, I don't want to exclude the ladies. Thank you for watching. See you later, alligators.